I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Piquis City Schools Board of Education. It is Thursday, November 16th. Um, Mr. Hiddle, could you please call roll? Mr. Mitchell. Here. Mr. Frazier. Here. Mr. Bostic. Here. Mr. Ford. Here. Mrs. McMahon. Here. Okay, let's all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, after reviewing the minutes from last month's regular meeting, if nobody saw any changes to be made, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So motion approved. And same for the agenda. If there are no changes to be made, can I get a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion approved. Mr. Bostic, do you have an Upper Valley Career Center update? We don't meet till uh, meet Monday night. Okay. So, no, nothing. Went to uh, OSB and went to a couple of uh, really good sessions for them on, on learning and uh, rigor of learning other subjects. And a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, career centers are doing are really focusing a lot more on some of the academics. And that helps some students who want to come there with the, uh, the base courses, math, science, that type of thing, STEM. So they're doing a nice job with that. So, so most of those that you went to were geared for? Yes, yeah, one was really good with rigor learning, you know, that where they're really doing a nice job researching how people learn, the best way they found to um, instruct students in different course areas and it's, it was really very good. Good. So. Glad you found some good ones. Yeah, it does, yeah, sometimes there's not, you know, I mean, it just depends. Yep, depends on the year. I got lucky. Yeah, I'm good. I'm glad you got some good information. Um, nobody from the public to speak on any agenda items. So let's move along to the treasurer's agenda, Mr. Hiddle. All right, everybody has a copy of the October fiscal reports. Was there any questions about the reports? <laughs> the other big thing we have tonight is the five-year forecast, so we will get started with that. It's always fun and exciting. It's a blast. <laughs> so I didn't have to change much because not too much has changed. We got a little bit of legislative stuff we'll talk about, but... As far as the forecast goes, we have a positive cash balance as we get through June of 2028, so we don't uh, foresee any circumstance at this point that would need us to go and run a levy or anything. So positive cash balance, overall long-term projections have been holding, so that the forecasting that we've been doing, the salaries projections, all those things are on, on point. Um, and so the state budget and the fair school funding plan is in its second biennium, so we're in year three of four, um, and it's a six-year total phase in. And so um, I've been working on the numbers to say, here's how much money that the district would be owed if we were fully funded. Um, and it could be still substantial, but again, that's tied to student attendance. So um, just things to keep in mind. And that's why I have in here enrollment is a key factor. Rather than where students are living, um, it's where they're actually attending school, and um, we're going to continue to get more pressure from private and charter schools as time goes on. Have we seen an impact of the Ed Choice? Young enrollment's down. Um, I would say since I've been here, it's consistently gone down a little bit each year, and then it's sort of is stabled out. Was our um, spike this past year? We're down like 100 students in totality. 
from okay. last year at the moment. It's like 80 some students. Um, when I first got here, we had close to 4,000, and now we're down to 3,200. If that gives you a bigger, like I've been here for now, this is my 11th November with the city schools. So, some some of that census, though, I mean, population transient like, students. That, no, no, just population. Okay. Yeah, there's less births. In this area. So our kindergarten so, classes yeah. are small. So, what do you think the draw is? Why are people leaving? Going to? The, they're not making babies. That's the problem. <laughs> I mean, the the reality is is that we if it weren't for immigration, the country's uh, population would be shrinking. Um, it's a it's a statewide problem. Um, Not a PICWA correct. exclusive to PICWA There's, thing. There was was it forty eight or fifty eight thousand students m like missing from last year to this year when the ODE did the census where they're at, and it's just kids who have moved out of state at that point. So families are moving to Florida. I mean, they're building hundreds of acres of houses. People could have ended up there, but overall, the state population for student enrollment is down. And what's the what's the size of our graduating class? Right now, I think it's 260-something. It's the same. And it varies, because I think our smallest class is like 246 mm -hmm. right now or something like that. So it just, it just depends. Yeah, I think it was 350 or something in my class back then. It was 264 when I graduated. Was it? Yeah, it, it does. It goes up and down. We've been about the same the last couple of years. Okay. Hmm. Just something we have to keep more of an eye on. Those kindergarten numbers are really going to be like, when you're looking at the long term of the five-year forecast, the kindergarten numbers matter. So on the back of the five-year forecast that you guys have, it actually does have some enrollment <laughs> projections for kindergarten on the back of there, I believe. Nope. Anyway, maybe it's at mine. Well, I have it somewhere. Good point. Anyways. We're, we usually go, we're hoping to get 250 to 275, right? I mean, that's the number. When I first got here, we were rooting for 300. So we've never gotten 300 since I've been here, but um, that's really where it's coming from. So just something to keep in mind as we're going forward. Again, this isn't coming to get us at the moment. It's just something that we have to keep an eye on as we move forward. I like to talk about where all the money is coming from and what it totals up to. So. The first big chunk of money that you see up here is the state foundation money. 47.2% of that money is what we're getting paid from the state of Ohio through our enrollment and what they're willing to pay. And again, that number should keep growing as we move forward because um, we're still on the formula. We're not on a guarantee or anything. So that means we have the room to still grow. We're at a cap, actually. Um, the next biggest chunk is real estate taxes, and that's 26.8%. A um, couple things to keep in mind when we talk about real estate taxes, the delinquency number that came in was another 250 some thousand dollars, $58,000. Um, so it inflated our real estate number for one year and then the auditor's office believes it'll come back down. So when you look at the forecast, um, you will see that the line 1.010 is 12 million this year and then it'll go back down to closer to 11 and a half million next year 11.7 so it's it that's the biggest blip that's in there is uh, a delinquency payment that was made uh, and then you have income tax and that's been steadily growing when you look at 1.030 we went from uh, 6.8 million in 2021 and we're projecting 7.7 .7 million 8.7 million in 2024 so you've seen we've had some significant growth over that time but that deals with inflation of course I mean, everyone has seen that happening and then people's increased salaries end up coming in for a more income tax money. Uh, one new little thing that's in there in the last couple of years is that tangible personal property tax number at 1%. Those are for our solar fields that we have in town. So we actually do get some utility money out of the solar fields. And so that's that 1% that's in there. The other state is... Um, property tax reimbursements, and then the other local is uh, money that we collect locally through um, fees and things like that. Any questions about that? And then we have our expenses estimated for 2024. Our biggest chunk is wages and benefits, and that is going to be 72.7% of our budget. 
And then again, keep in mind the second biggest piece up here, our services of 21.3%. Um, $3.2 million of that 2.13% is going to the ESC, Miami County ESC, and then a little bit to Montgomery County ESC. And they do have staff that work for us as well. So that gets us closer to that 80% figure that we try to stay at. Um, otherwise, services are things like the utilities, bills, um, repairs that are being done in the buildings, those kind of things. So that covers the three biggest parts. Then we've got our supplies at 4.2%. Capital is less than 1%, and that's because we have a PI fund, so usually we're not buying too many things out of there. And other is, is um, fees and things like that from the auditor's offices for collecting taxes and those kind of things. Any questions about that? And then this graph shows you um, our revenue to expenses. We always say we stay in the black. This graph shows you that we have stayed in the black and, and not expended more than we received since 2021, but really clear back until 2007. Um, and our ending cash balance remains positive. So you can see that in this graph as well. It looks like as we get towards FY27, it could flip to deficit spending, but again, that's projected beyond the biennium. And so it's really hard to say what that looks like if we get the the um, rest of the fair school funding formula put into place, then we should be good for several more years without even deficit spending. Any questions about that? The bottom line is that we have to stay vigilant on what's happening with the fair school funding plan because it is beneficial to pick with city schools. But the other thing that I wanted to talk about tonight when we talk about what we need to watch for is the state legislature. I actually agree with what they're doing, which I know you don't hear me say very often, <laughs> I know. But at the end of the day, I don't wanna see our seniors taxed out of their homes. And so I don't wanna get way into the weeds, but there's a base level that we collect for property taxes because that's what was determined we needed to operate schools and that's 20 mills. So we're at the 20 mill floor like most of Miami County. I think all but one school is not at the 20 mill floor. So we're collecting the, the minimum amount that we can collect in property taxes. So then when um, the auditor's office had to go around and do their triannual appraisal, the state of Ohio said, we don't like your numbers to all the counties, you gotta use this formula. And so the value of the districts and all of your properties all went up. Well, the 20 mil floor stayed the same, so everybody's taxes went up. And we, it wasn't because we passed the levy, it's because the value of everyone's homes went up because of all the inflation that was happening. What this does is increase the taxes on everybody, but specifically senior citizens who are on a fixed income have now found themselves with an even bigger bill that they're not able to pay. And I don't want to see our seniors getting taxed out of their homes. And so one of the topics that we've been discussing is, is there a way to expand the homestead exemption to be able to give them more relief so that they don't get taxed out of their houses. So I do believe something has to be done because that, that makes me sick to think that that would be happening. So, while I appreciate that values of homes and stuff have changed, I don't want it to negatively impact our residents. So, I am actually sort of in favor with trying to fix it um, because it's not something that we needed today and I don't wanna see senior citizens not figuring out how they're gonna pay their bills. So, just something to keep in mind that this is in, in the works and we'll see what ends up happening with it. So. We could be eating the bill or the state may pay the bill. We don't know. So we're still working on that. Otherwise, we're financially stable and we'll continue monitoring. If anything changes, I, I mean, I feel good and comfortable with where we're at. Um, our staff has received a, a, a very nice raise over the next three years. And I think that we're in a good position to, to be able to afford to do that. And um, and still be fiscally sound. So I don't see any hiccups at this point, but and there always could be one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So is there any questions? Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. I just don't want you to feel left out. Well, last time I didn't know if I could ask the question. You can talk anytime, all the time. 
Except Our, when Tony's talking, he doesn't like me. <laughs> 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 Okay, can I get a motion to oh, a pr one more thing? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Talk about I it was under the I thought it should have been out anyway. Uh, we're recommending the board approval to use the Southwestern Ohio Education Pur Purchasing Council to issue a uh, proposal for purchase of competitive retail natural gas. So we are going back out for bid to we're in a consortium to buy natural gas, and it's cheaper than buying it on your own. So. It's just giving them the authorization to do that on our behalf. Okay. So it saves money. It's been a great program. And how often does that have to happen? It's usually, um, this is the second time, so it happens every five years or so. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Now may I get a motion to approve the treasurer's agenda? So moved. Second. All in, oh, Mr. Hiddle, please call roll. Mr. Fraser. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mrs. McMackin. Aye. Okay, the treasurer's agenda is now approved. Moving on to the superintendent's report, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Uh, one of the most important parts of our work, as you know, is safety of our students and our staff and our buildings. Uh, we meet periodically with staff we review our plan and um, we'll actually be doing that on Monday um, with staff where they can give input and one of the things that we heard of the last couple of years is just more police presence in our building um, several of us met with some commissioners and the city manager last year we talked about that as well as with our police chief we've been in really good communication um, with them we have a great partnership with our police department our officers are so good with our students and our staff they're great at helping us with things like threat assessments as well as our DARE education program. So we sought some extra um, supports with having more police presence in our buildings and we were able to um, work through that. And obviously they were losing officers for um, retirement and we were asking for more officers. So they had to go through a process of getting some officers trained and getting them hired and, and helping them get placed in our buildings. So I won't talk about the specifics in the plan because we don't always release safety things um, publicly because we you know we don't want to compromise that but um, the, the basics of it is the main goal is to ensure the safety and the security of all the learning environments in our buildings um, they will be teaching dare and they do again help us with our threat assessments which is a really important um, um, tool that we have when using them they're they're very good at helping us with that process the um, MOU is for three hundred ninety thousand dollars eight hundred seventy three three hundred ninety thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars and um, that will um, increase our presence of police in our buildings. So we're, we're pleased to have that. It's a five-year contract, and it does allow for annual increases for insurance and cost of living. So um, I'll be asking you on my agenda to, to approve that. Is there any questions about that work? You've been pretty much in, engaged in it over the last year. Some of you went to that meeting, so you, you kind of know where you've been working on it. Is this one in each building? I will not release no, information true. that will yeah. compromise the, the plan, safety plan. But we have the drastically the increased. Yeah. Gotcha. We have we have drastically increased our our police presence, and and e even to the point where, if it's not part of the MOU, we have officer presence, which is really great of our city to offer. So. See, I knew that. I was just testing you to make sure. Yeah. I didn't give up <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about anything else with it? We are we are uh, really fortunate. I mean, I there's just any you know, things happen outside of school hours during school hours. We have we just have a really good communication. I really appreciate everything that they do. Our officers are excellent. I mean, every single officer we've ever worked with, they're just really fantastic. So so we're very fortunate. I feel very good about that. That's good news. Okay. Just a few other updates. We had a really great Veterans Day event. Um, Steve, thanks for coming and helping. We, we're, we're back to pre-COVID <coughs> numbers now, which is great because we were really on a good motion prior to COVID and then that stifled things. But we um, prepared 340 breakfast and they were gone. And, and they were so appreciative. The, the kids did a great program and every veteran got a special gift from a kid. And um, we had every building represented. It was at the high school. So just a wonderful event again. So um, we'll be doing that every year. We always welcome our veterans back for that event. 
The only problem I see with that is we're going, <coughs> we're going to get big. We're going to have to find a bigger place. We are. Which is so we, we actually talked about that. One of the things when we do when we have our events, we, we immediately take notes and we start already thinking. So um, we, have a, we have a new idea for next year that I won't share <laughs> yet. And um, we also talked about how we'll, we'll meet that need. But um, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, so um, And it's a wide range. We've had World War II all the way down mm -hmm. to the most current conflicts over in the Middle East. Um, represented and again they're just so appreciative we're, we're, we're very blessed to have so, some great veterans in our community but the, it's so neat to see our kids engage with them it's so important mm -hmm. and they really do engage to the point where they'll sit with the veteran that comes by themselves they'll, they'll serve them the breakfast they'll walk them to the table they'll walk them out of the building we have the um, the new pits and barker display they walked veterans down to see that um, the, the kids get it and they know they're serving a different generation so really really special it's, it's great great moment um, just a congratulations to our fall sports teams they had great seasons it's just fun watching kids do the extracurriculars and our winter sports will be gearing up here soon so we're excited about that and we'll be um, talking about new new things happening with our students and our sports programs our band did a great job at state. They got a one again. This is the third year in a row that they've, they've received a one. They received, um, I think, one from all the judges. And um, we, again, hosted the state finals for me at the Alexander Stadium. We did that two weekends in a row. Um, that's a great thing for our community. A lot of people came to Pinkwood during that time. So we welcome them, and we're glad to be the, that host. Is that two nights in a row? Is that it's, it's two Sundays uh, in a row, actually. Okay. They're, they're, bands from the entire state come, so they're far and wide. I mean, they travel all, all over to, to get here to, to compete. So um, it's, a, it's a flow. They do five bands at a time. They judge them. Um, they, they go through and get the announcements. Those people... They leave, the next group's coming in. It's a, it's a continual flow of traffic all day, all day long. No. Yeah. So lots of people coming in to pick up. There were lots of people. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on those two Sundays, but it was Back. packed. It and is. And I like, drove by. Yeah, it, it, it is busy. So we're hoping we get to do that. It's our second year in the row. Um, they've, they've liked what we've done. We've made some adjustments from last year. We've made some new suggestions on parking flow and how to get bands in and out. I, I should say thank you to Edison as well as the Career Center because they've allowed us to use their parking lots for bands to come in and do warm ups and drop off their um, props and things. So um, that whole area is really utilized very well. It's really nice to have that campus. Show choir season started off. We literally shut the door on band, and show choir happened two days later, and um, it was a great opening. They they missed um, the the grand finale by one point, mm. and um, but they did get best in their class, several caption awards. Um, I know Sean was there. I was there. Um, we are um, we're proud parents, so we'll tell you that we were the best anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, their show's very entertaining. It's very energetic, and you you don't walk away from that dazzled. I mean, you, they're, they're just really good. So I, I'm anxious to see how they compete. They're going to bigger competitions this year than they ever have. So um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch them throughout the, the year. Got the Saturday yeah. is the, um, what do they call Premier. it? Premiere. Premiere. So um, tickets sold out, I'm sorry to say, in no time flat. But um, they will work with young kids in grades one all the way through eight. The show choir kids will teach those kids a show, and then all those parents and kids get to perform it that night. And then when they're done, those kids will sit down, and then they'll get to watch the show choir do their full show. So they'll premiere it to the public, and um, people will get to see that. But any time tickets go on sale, they're just they're just gone. So um, I hope hope some of you are going to go. If not, um, you got to see them sometime this year, at least at um, just us maybe. So. Um, other than that, we have Drumbeat Live that we're working on right now, so that'll be coming out. So there'll be some new features that we'll talk about in the district, and that'll come out on our YouTube channel as well as um, our Channel 5. So look for that here in the next couple weeks. We're starting to film that and put it together, and um, that'll, that'll be out soon. So a lot of good information will be coming out in that for the public. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Now we can move on to your agenda. All right. I'd like to recommend the board to approve the attached list of donations to the Pickle City School District. <clears throat> we did have a donation in honor of Brandon Copeland for his scholarship. He was a 2000 graduate that um, unfortunately died in a car crash right after he graduated. Um, didn't, didn't get to go to college, did not get to 
um, you know, start his life, so to speak. But um, we do get donations every year on his behalf for his scholarships. So we really appreciate that, and that really keeps his spirit alive. We got some, um, several grants from the Pickle Education Foundation. Um, they're very supportive of the programs in our school, so I um, want to accept those on behalf of the teachers and share our appreciation for that as well. Recommend the board approval of the attached list of library books from Pickle Central Intermediate School for disposal and removal for the inventory of Pickle City Schools. Um, you, you noticed last week we had, or last month we had some. This is just that time of the year where they're weeding out books that kids aren't checking out anymore. Um, they go through and find bindings that aren't, aren't working very well and um, they just get rid of those books and um, start purchasing some new ones for the collection. Recommend board approval for the overnight field trip to do Glen Helen for fifth grade. That's our yearly outdoor education that they do. They've done that for several years. I believe they're going in April this year. So um, it's a great trip. It's based on science mostly and um, kids have a good time. They had their parent night for that and they had more parents show up for this than they have any other time ever according to the principal. Hmm. So they're anticipating a large group of students going this year. So again, wow. getting back to those good numbers finally and people are really getting engaged in those programs. So we're excited about that opportunity for our kids. Is that $150 per student? On, yes. On the, yep. So that's, the, that's a student expense, not? Correct. We're not covering the cost of Correct, okay. no, nope. yep. And they do lots of fundraisers. They offer scholarships, they have sponsorships, so they, they do everything they can, just like with the Washington DC trip in eighth grade to make sure every kid has yeah, an opportunity to go if they want to. So, and it's not mandatory, they don't have to go, but um, several kids showed interest this year. Uh, recommend board approval for the enrollment of Lassane Meyer from the Netherlands at Piqua High School for the 24-25 school year as a foreign exchange student through the ASSE International Student Exchange Program. So this will be for next year. She's already been selected. Um, she's excited about coming over. And the family hosting um, had one this last year, and it was very successful. And uh, we're pleased with ASSE's um, international program. They're a good program. I've actually hosted an exchange student through them, and they, they do a really good, thorough job. So we're excited to have um, her join our ranks, and our students get to meet some, some students from around the world. So it's a win-win. Recommend board approval of the attached um, school resource officer memorandum of understanding, and that's what we discussed in my um, report. Other than that, if you don't have any questions, that's all I have. No questions? All right, guys. May I get a motion to approve the superintendent's agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Superintendent's agenda is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lyons, please proceed. Thank you. Um, just want to welcome Cody Bell back. Cody was with us for a while, and so he's all trained up. All we have to do is get him in a seat for a few hours, and he'll be ready to take her out. He actually starts next week. Um, and interestingly enough, we have two new drivers coming on board, one of which is coming from Columbus City Schools. Mm -hmm. And she has complete, and that will be here. There you and, go. Um, and she will be starting next week as well, and she's already completely trained. So all we have to do is get her in a seat for a couple hours. So that's going to help us out a lot. Um, as you can see, we, we did have a resignation out of that department in there as well. So that will get us back up to full capacity. With our, our two new uh, custodians, um, Patricia Neal and Bobby Ray, we. Um, are back up to full capacity with custodians right now. We are looking at our need district-wide to see if we have any other holes we need to fill, really. And then we're gonna have, probably within, within the next year, a retirement for sure this coming year, probably one or two more over the next three years. So we'll begin to try to get subs in and get them started and get them learning those kinds of things. Uh, but they've been great, so. Outside of that, you all had the, the notes. Um, any questions on there? Anything what brings someone saw? from Columbus? Is it purely for the bus driving job they're coming from Columbus? No, <coughs> no she's <coughs> not coming here for bus driving. She landed here, and because she's a licensed bus driver, she's looking for employment, and we're always kind of pushing stuff out right. there to let us know. So she reached out with an email. I sent it to Regina. She starts calling her references. Well, you can imagine what that's like trying to get references in from Columbus City Schools, you know, I mean, as big as they are. But they finally called her back and just raved about her. And mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna, we're gonna get, get her going. But yeah, typically people aren't gonna say, 
hey, I want to be a bus driver here. Now, I will tell you this, our um, financial pieces for our bus drivers here are more competitive than they are where she's coming from. Nothing against them. It's just, it was nice to know that even against some of these bigger mm -hmm. districts, we're very competitive right now with our wages. So that was, that was good. Yeah, that's a good place yeah. to be in. It is. It is. So. Because um, that's been a hard position to fill hard, the last few so years. So that's hard, a really yeah. good thing. And, and the big part is you've got this window of, we've talked about some ways to approach this differently um, with the hiring process. Because you know you have up to potentially three months once you onboard somebody, that whole process of getting them ready to drive in a bus. And then you have them drive around. So even if they are ready, by the time school starts, you can't just put them in a bus. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that our um, OBIs are comfortable with what they're doing in that seat with a group of kids on the bus. So, I mean, I always tell everybody it's different than anybody else you onboard because now we have to make sure that you're completely ready to pass the test. Mm -hmm. So it's good to, to get people in the middle of the year that have licenses, and we're going to try to identify people right before summer that we can get trained and finish that up throughout the summer this year. So good stuff. Yeah, it's great. Any other questions? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And may I get a motion to approve the personnel agenda? So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Hiddle, could you please call roll? Aye. Mr. Frazier. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Bostick. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. The motion carries and the personnel agenda is approved. And we do not have any old business, but we do have new business. This is just something that we needed to pass uh, in July, and we went back and looked through, and it got missed on the agenda somehow. So this is giving the superintendent and I the authority to enter into contracts with the Miami County ESC, as we've done for years and years in the past. So, um, and we're already in those contracts, so this is sort of retroactive to when that is. It's just we caught it when we were going through things that it was missing. And that just happens every year it in is. the summer or in November. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Should be in November again, but for whatever reason, it got dropped off when you copied the meeting over. It just it didn't end up getting moved. So. Okay. Any questions regarding that? All right. If not, can I get a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Um, I guess. Please call roll. Mr. Bostic. All right. Mr. Ford. Yeah. Mr. Frazier. All right. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Motion carries and the agreement is approved. And no one from the public to speak on non agenda items. So may I get a motion to move into executive session, which is what's going to be happening happening next. Correct. And there will be action after the meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries and we will be moving into executive session and our next regular board meeting will take place here on Thursday, December 14th. Boom. So may I get a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Okay. Don't we have to come out of the no? We're not adjourning. Yeah. Oh, we can't. We, have to we come don't out have of executive session. <coughs> okay. Yeah, we have to come back in. Okay, and then in this meeting after. No, no. Okay. No, I don't think this is the first time. I think we've had an executive session since you. Maybe, maybe I don't think time, so. But, yeah. yeah, I just didn't not get regular. that down right. I'm sorry. Okay, no, moving into executive session. <sighs> We're moving out of executive session, and now may I get a motion to approve an addendum to our agenda to add the renewal of the superintendent's contract? So move. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? OK. 
Okay, motion carries. May I now get a motion to approve the renewal of the superintendent's five-year contract? So Second. Second. Okay, can we get a roll call? Mr. Hiddle. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Frazier. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye, gladly. Thank and you. then, last but not least, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries, and tonight's meeting and executive session are adjourned. <laughs>